Another Realm is a real play Dungeons and Dragons podcast, wherein Bruce, Tanner, and Will try to make dumb jokes and a compelling story. Some of the content within will not be for children, but if that doesn't bother you, then here's what happened on the last episode of Another Realm. A human male of imposing stature walking into town from the west. And on his back is a big fucking great axe! You suddenly hear a painfully sharp whistle, followed by the screams of a few citizens. What the fuck have I walked into here? Amongst that smoke and wreckage, uh, you can make out two figures. One is a human male pinned under a large fallen beam. The other stands nearly seven feet tall and is covered in metal from head to foot. Oi, bro, if you could do something about that pipe, you worry about that, I'll worry about this. And then the lights in its eyes go dim. Lights out, metal man. I ask that you come to my place of business in the morning. We will discuss more of this uh, big issue that I have. Hello, this unit is six. Thank you for hitting my reset button. I'm about to make a terrible decision. Well, I don't know where your body is, bro, but I gave you one. So I'm going to use my full robot force and open the door. It is I, normal human, Jason. (laughs) How are you, people? To set the scene, we are now inside the edge on the ground floor. It is a pretty standard medieval tavern fair, a little bit rustic, wooden tables throughout. It's very busy. There is a bard playing music over in the corner near the hearth. And uh, all about people are drinking, playing games, talking to each other, telling stories. There is a large woman behind the bar who is serving people drinks. And bam, just into this place barges uh, this very large humanoid dressed in the monk's robes of Froderick, a leather blacksmith apron and gloves, and a really strange metal mask. It it has a mustache. It's Guy Fox, but not, but worse. Are Guy Fox uh, masks made of metal typically? No, I mean, okay, um, shape-wise, it is very it is very simple. I need to remind you, this is a very simple mask oh, that yeah. you asked a blacksmith to craft in, like, Oh, no, hour. absolutely. It's, oh, for sure, for sure. But this is the mask that I will forever wear because I love he, it. What he's saying is the contour lines are very, very sharp. Oh, yeah, you are. You have some real hard edges. Um Ooh, no maybe I'll get say, somebody to make a better... I'll just upgrade my mask constantly to look more human. Just insult Father Dell the next time you return to town. Like, oh, I, oh, okay. Uh, that's fine. That's not how Father Dell talks at all, but I'm just not cracking that I mean, right to yet. be fair, Father Dell kind of gets himself into plenty of shit to on his fair. own. To I be mean, fair! The man's just... To be fair! The man's just uh, interested in things. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so um, you've you've kicked in this door six, and I didn't kick it. I just used my full robot strength. I just want to make it clear: I did not kick F- the door. Fine. You, you I bust it. into it. It is a clamor as you. you know, <laughs> that's not how doors sound, but I appreciate the effort. <laughs> I thought you meant was that, clamor was inside, that supposed like to be a door clamor. sound. No, no, that was I thought he was clamor. Doing, yeah, clamor. <laughs> but uh, I, I just want to walk in. I want to walk into any bar and hear that noise. I'm walking out <laughs> immediately. <laughs> That's supposed to be crowd clamor, but um, I misunderstood. Oddly <laughs> enough, any bar where Will exists sounds like that. It's a- <laughs> ah, got it. Yes. <laughs> As Six enters, the clamor that sounds like uh, d- immediately is done, and what? silence overtakes the room. As this door slams on the side and he yells out the most human thing. 
I, ever are you spoken. A, are you a he? Are, are we going? They, I mean, they, right? Like, they. I mean, I ever, guess technically the robot does not have a gender, but yeah, he identifies as he. Okay. Is that what we're doing? That's what I'm asking. <laughs> the patrons, upon noticing this strangely dressed visitor, immediately go back to drinking. Uh, none of them care. The clamor starts back up. They're just like, all right, it's fine. She's another freaking <laughs> drug person. <laughs> Bruce's, Bruce's version of the clamor in the bar is killing me. <laughs> it's very good. I mean, it's it's freaking terrible. <laughs> but it's very good. What One person, however, does not go back immediately to what they were doing. Let this me guess, man, Strickland. <laughs> hey, yeah, well, all right, good, great, great. Thanks for, yeah, thanks for, you know, just reading the foreshadowing. Yeah, Strickland, the man uh, in, in black-clad armor. He's currently not donning his armor, but now you can tell, like, he is just a large, muscled dude. He does stand up from his chair and begins walking over. I, I like, I don't see him out of the corner of my eye. I'm, not, I'm looking at the whole surrounding. I walk straight to the bar. I am Jason. Can I have an alcohol? The the woman behind the bar, I mean, she cocks her head and, and just gives you a look. Uh, she has a long red braid of hair over her right shoulder. She's a, a pretty built person, too. And as she's kind of been moving about. Is everybody just ripped in this town? Everyone's ripped. I just want ripped people. I just want ripped, <laughs> ripped cool people, man. No, this, this human woman... The, the main thing you note about her, besides her amazing traps and triceps, are the mechanical contraptions she has attached to her legs. They're these metal braces that are etched with uh, runes on them that look to be dwarven. But she, she cocks her head at you and, and uh, looks over and sees Strickland making his way over very slowly. And she says above the normal volume that you would be talking to someone in this close proximity, uh, most likely so that Strickland can hear. Jason, the troublemaker of the 32nd. I almost didn't recognize you in that mask. I haven't seen you since the end of the war. I've never seen you before. Oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> she reaches across the bar and pulls you into an embrace oh, oh. and says into your ear, I am only helping you because I don't want any trouble in my bar tonight. And Strickland over there has a bigger stick up his ass than anyone I've ever met. I'll play along. You can see that Strickland is glowering at you from the middle of the bar. He's braced against a table and has shoved a few people out of the way to get where he is. But as soon as he sees the bartender talking with you in a familiar manner, he begrudgingly turns back around. If I'm to play along... I must know your name. She releases you and says, Pansy Gasbron, owner and operator of The Edge. I say in a louder voice, Ah, yes, our time in the war, Gasbron. I remember all too well. It's great to see you, old friend. <laughs> she just, she just sighs so hard and crosses her arms and says, You asked for an alcohol. I feel like you're multiple children in a robe. So I need to ask you, how old are you? I'm at least four years old. That is certainly not old enough to drink. <laughs> oh, I didn't realize there was an age requirement. What is the age to drink? Fuck. <laughs> World building time that I hadn't expected. Uh, if you're old enough to work the field, then you're old enough to drink. So, 14 on special occasions. Okay. I'll have to come back in 10 years. I like this establishment. Gosbron. That sounds so weird and inhuman when you say it. Just pansy is fine. And she offers her hand. I, uh... <laughs> I don't know what to do. I, I, I also, I, uh, I reach out the same hand she reaches it out, and I just, I hold it. I grab her hand and hold it. Yes, I love it. If you could read human emotion, you could tell that she is so done. She'll say, "And now's the time where you give me your name, Jason." Roll deception for me. Of course, uh, five minus one. <laughs> Let me roll against you. Uh, oh, great. <laughs> a, 
A six. Oh, nice. <laughs> well, she's marginally better. Marginally better, and that counts. Let's try that one more time. My friends all call me six. That honestly seems strange enough to fit. Do you have business in town? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, she narrows her eyes and says, On the edge of a Toria with no business. Maybe I should have let Strickland figure you out. Speaking of whom, he just finished his sixth pint and is probably looking for his first brawl of the evening. Oh wait, I almost forgot. My new acquaintance, Archibald Theodore Cromwell, is meeting Bates de Shear tomorrow morning, bright and early. There's apparently a large contract that we are going to take. And by we, I mean I'm not invited yet. But I plan on becoming good friends with Archie. Wait, what was that roll for? Don't worry about it. Pansy will shake her head and say, That's a lot of information you should probably keep a little closer to your chest. Especially since it looks like our friend Strickland over there is regaining some interest. I suggest you head on out. On a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate this interaction? <laughs> you know what, 6? A 2. I've had one worse conversation in my life. That's good to know. I will improve next time. Great. Now how about that one non-alcoholic drink? How about... water? She sets the glass of water down in front of you. Um... <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, okay, see, no, that's no. One. You have to... Okay, it is... I, I am an organic being. I have organic parts to me. So I should be able right. to put water inside myself. I don't necessarily need water. So the, the water compartment is actually... The water compartment for his radiator or whatever, whatever you want to call it is actually on the side of his head. Uh, so he okay. kind of puts the he kind of put, pulls the thing up, pulls his hood over his mask a little bit, so where she can't see what he's doing, and he pours it down the little little side compartment there, the little vent right there that allows water to go in. Um, okay, are you trying? You're trying to be a little conspicuous about this? Oh yeah, roll slide hand. Oh great, two, <laughs> that one. Oh yes, <laughs> uh, she doesn't notice a thing. She just watches you and nods. And it's like, this seems completely normal. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that is exactly how people drink. I, I know and understand this and observe it right now. After your display of perfect human drinking technique, Pansy says, Listen, Six, it was an experience meeting you, but I have to go attend to other customers. At this point, I kind of want to go see the rest of the city. Sure. You stroll around town. There's a little bit of nightlife going on, but not much in the way of people outside of the tavern. He waves at everyone. You know what? A fair number of people wave back. Nice. They're, they're ripped and friendly. Yeah, every, everyone's ripped and friendly. Baith isn't, isn't ripped. Uh, that you know of. So you're, you're walking down Edge Street, which is where the, the edge is on. You pass by Outward Enterprises. You see a couple other stores, including Doting Doublets and other Grateful Garments, because I want to mention that again, because it's so fun for me to say. You, you end up finding a plaque kind of towards the center of town that gives a little bit more information about Leyland. It says the, the current population is 1,511-ish, and that the township is governed by a council led by a human male named Nasca. Beyond that, you know, it's a relatively small and quiet town here on the edge of, uh, of Atoria. You do end up seeing some signs that lead to, like, uh, a scenic viewpoint for the wound. So you follow that path down and eventually make it to this massive canyon that splits the continent. It runs north to south. It is incredibly deep, and you can kind of see some glimmering in the far wall of, you know, certain stones and different layers of earth. It is a gorgeous sight. As you look from here, you can see the ruins across the way. You can't, you can't really see much about them, but you can tell that they're there. Ah, got it. Okay, as you have finished exploring Leyland, I need you to go ahead and roll a perception check for me. 
Uh, that is a 14 plus 519, baby. Ooh, very nice. Okay, cool. Um, what I you, see? You don't see anything at first. You hear something like nearby footsteps that stop as soon as you do. Being six, <laughs> I, I guess he uh, turns around and says, hello. Hello? Anyone there? As soon as you call out into the darkness, you hear and see fog from around the corner of a nearby building. What the fuck? Did somebody just do a ninja bomb? <laughs> it could be a ninja bomb. Um, okay. All right, so Six obviously knows now that he is being followed for some reason or another. Um, after talking to Pansy, he's learned to keep stuff close to the chest. Uh, that's a more human thing to do. So I guess what he doesn't want to do in this particular moment, he's probably still going to be very forthright in the future, but in this particular moment, he doesn't want to lead whoever this is back to Father Dell. Just in case something happens, so let's he's gonna take off towards like the alleyways, try to try to lose whoever this is. Okay, so you're gonna go away from the, the fog? Yes. Away from the fog and away from the church. Um Okay. You take off down the alleyways uh, and you go north along the wound and cut through the buildings and the businesses. Eventually you make your way again past the edge, which has died off at this point, and continue on until you sort of feel a little bit more at ease. And within this area you've come up on, you can see uh, a few a few stores, but the recognizable one that was mentioned earlier was uh, Outward Enterprises. You've come upon Outward Enterprises at the end of this alleyway. All right, perfect. This is perfect because... He knows he wants to meet with Archie and Baith tomorrow. So what what Six is going to do is take his rest here, quote unquote rest. It's more of a uh, just kind of chilling. He can still see and hear everything while he's resting. So he will just hide in this alleyway and wait until uh, Archie shows up in the morning. Okay, there are a few options for hiding here. You see some crates, a uh, crate. barrel that's right beneath a window. Okay, he takes a crate and puts it on his head. You Just a crate and puts it on his head? Yep, and pokes little eye holes. He cuts little eye holes with his welder that he obviously has. You take a whole ass crate and carve out some eye holes... Yep. And put it on your head. Do you squat down or anything? Are you just standing there oh, yeah. like a crate man? He kind of like, I like to think when he sleeps, like all of his uh, arms and legs go into his body. Yeah, that's what happens. I still I imagine feel- him as like a box. You remember Cartman in that episode of South Park where he's no, just. No, uh, I 100% don't. What? Oh, but, 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 be, Ro- not be, Robo. No, from, uh, yeah. I was thinking, I was thinking big, you, you know, Big Hero 6, how he tucks down into a little thing? Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that's going to, I feel like, I feel like I, I you know, this no, is a that's collaborative. No, that's not what I look like. I feel like this is like, it's a collaborative effort that you and I are going through. And this is your character. And I shouldn't be telling you how to, how to do anything with your character. But I feel like that's going to get me in trouble in the future if you're able to kind of tuck your, yourself into yourself like some sort of mechanical snail. I don't think he can do that, to be fair. So uh, he just, he kind of squats. He kind of gets into a deep squat. And so the crate looks natural, except with two eye holes and kind of a glow coming from it. Okay. So you, you full on slav squat down here um, and position yourself next to the building in a, in a crate that has eye holes. And we'll go, we'll go into Warforged hibernation. Uh, it's very good and it's going to work out just fine. Don't worry. It's going to work out just fine. I'm, yeah. I'm certain of it. As we move on into the next day, we're now in one of the uh, homely little rooms in the backside of the edge 
a room where Archie has slept through the night, unaware of uh, Six's nighttime escapades. Archie wakes up and throws back the curtains of the nearby window to let the morning sun cascade in. Archie, you're able to look out of this window over the wound and see the sunrise uh, just filling the land past the splinterlands and far to the east over the Veilbreak Mountains as the, the morning sun just starts to peek up over the land. You then begin to put on your suit, um, and as you finish buttoning up your jacket, you grab your cane and your big fucking great axe, and you begin to make your way downstairs into the tavern portion of the inn, and then outside into the streets of Leyland. You remember that you have business at Outward Enterprises, so you begin to make your way towards 12 Edge Street. Oh yes, another day of standing on the edge. It's clever. It's clever. Got him. You go inside, and Baith is there, you know, this, this elf gentleman in his burgundy cloak, pouring over some papers. He looks pretty frustrated as you walk in, and looks up with you, and uh, just a, a long sigh. Well, that doesn't sound too good. Eh... Uh, it is not the best when you have to start your day dealing with the dicks from the Black Hole Collective. Just kick them out. It's your shop, isn't it? You, you would think that. But the problem is, is that they are a very large corporate group and they have very strong ties with the Crown. So almost any legitimate business that is dealing with adventuring guilds uh, is done through them. They have... They keep on bringing in people and sending them out. Uh, so it is very hard not to deal with them if you wish to still do business. Oh, I see. The problem that you might have with them is that they have now taken business from you. Well, how you figure that? The job that I promised you yesterday? They took the contract. And that means what exactly? It means... You have competition. So, you can still have the job, but there seem to be other complications down on the road that I was not aware of until they came in. You see, there is a bit of a hang-up. I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. Have you, ch have you checked in with the robot? Ted, I rolled an 18 perception. I'm standing on the outside listening. Okay. The, 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 the metal man... Uh, that doesn't provide any hiccups. I just want to know what, how is that situation? Did, 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 is it just we're leaving it with Father Dell? Well, you, the job description was not to take care of a metal man, to be fair. Well, yes, but this is now something that you're just involved in. I can easily uninvolve myself. There's about three different ways out of the town, bruv. It might be wise to perhaps take it with you? so that it is no longer in the town, and perhaps could provide some form of... D uh, door know. opens. Yes, t uh, yes, take me with you, Mr. Cromwell. What are you doing here? I don't sleep. That's weird. That's not how you start a conversation. Seems like you guys were already having a conversation. I was merely interrupting. That's also rude. I still have a lot to learn. I can be of great service, and I need to find Brother Gansel. This is serendipitous. He comes along right at the moment we were talking about him, and honestly, you need all the protection you can get when you're trying to do this job and beat the Black Old Collective to the punch. Otherwise, you're not getting all of the either I was promising you. So, seems like a good deal to me. Doesn't seem like a good deal to me, bro. Seems like I'm going to get put back into metal bars. I follow this course. Well, hang on one second. And he looks over to you, Six. How do you feel about money? What is money? I, I kind of thought that that might be the, the case. No money. Free protection. You saw what they did to the town. You fought one. They were pretty formidable. Yeah, you do make a good point. Doesn't mean I have to like it, but you do make a good point. I can do this. I cast guidance on him. <laughs> so... Uh, just these little sort of electrostatic sparkles come out and you kind of feel your hair on your arm raise 
Uh, that's really the only indication you have that a spell has been cast on you. Yeah, just so you know what guidance is, which I'm sure you do, but I'm going to make sure that everybody listening does. It is uh, you get to add 1d4 to all your ability checks. So if you try to persuade him right now, you get to add a d4. And you feel good. It makes you feel real good. I'm watching you. You understand me? I, Ar, Ar, Archie's doing the, doing the two finger, my eyes to your eyes kind of thing. <laughs> Clearly very suspicious of this robot that's flinging spells inside of this tiny collectible shop. I would never cast a spell to harm you, Mr. Cromwell. Is it just me or is it the, is the way he says names? Does the, it doesn't sound right, right? Like it's very impersonal or something? How should I say it? I, you should say it however most comes natural to you. If this is how it sounds most natural out of your voice thing, then uh, stick with it. I'll give it a try. Nice to meet you, Beisajir. That was actually terrifying. <laughs> well, bro, you see, if you don't have emotion, you can't have proper voice inflection. Hey, we have concluded that he has no emotion. Well, he's a robot. I, I do have feelings. I slapped six across the face. And you've officially hurt them. Perfect. The, the thing that we need to, to discuss is I, I really don't want to give the Black Old Collective any money. Okay? So, I want to also give you this contract. The problem is they have like an hour head start at this point. And they have a writ of passage to get through uh, wound hold which is the quickest way to get over to Leyland Ruins. Someone tried to cross the border illegally, or there was something going on where the, the whole barony in that area is, is on high alert. So getting through there is only possible officially if you have a rate of passage and a contract with the Crown, which the Black Old Collective does. Again, they have connections. However... If you would still like to take the contract, a bit of fuck you towards the Black Hole Collective, which I would appreciate, you could then, uh, you could still get through. I know a way. Or I know a person who knows a way. So what you're saying is break the law, piss off some mercenary guild, piss off the crown, I ain't walk me way across the country with a robot, just took part in destroying a town. Is that what you're suggesting? Exactly. Oh, all right. Sounds like an adventure. I'm in. Did I just, did I just hear you correctly, Mr. Cromwell? You're going to take me with you? We'll be Archie and Android. You'll be an adventure. I, I would like to not go by Android. Sucks to be you. You could call me Jason. I may have introduced myself as Jason to some other people. That's besides the point. Wait, you, what do you mean you introduced yourself to other people? Never mind. Go, go ahead and roll persuasion. Yeah, minus one, eight. Who did you talk to? Pansy. The innkeeper. She and I are old war buddies. Not the worst person you could have talked to, but you do need to get the fuck out of town. Okay. Adventure. Listen, for the laundry list of things that you just went through, Archie, that you talked about, you know, this is... I am paying very good for this. Uh, the, the whole contract that I am offering to the Black Old Collective is 750 either. That's how much I said I would pay them for completing it. If you do it, and you beat the Black Hole Collective to it, I will throw in an extra 25. So 775 either. Is that a lot? Oh, that's a lot, bruv. All right, then fuck it. I'm in. Let's do this. Excellent. So I need you to go to Leyland Ruins by way of Woundhold Keep and figure out what is going on over there. I, had, I have seen some lights going off, which is just very irregular. There should be no one there. It is in the middle of the splinter lens, and it is very, um, it's a very dangerous place. Just, just based on the, uh, the amount of the tectonic activity. The way that you can get through the wound is by going underneath it. So Woundhold Keep currently has a system of caves that I have a friend exploring. Um, she is actually a, a doctor from the eastern side of the continent. Uh, and she is here exploring the cavern system in some capacity for academia. Uh, she needs someone's help to get through, but she knows the way. 
So if you help her, that will be the extra 25 either. You know, you used a lot of big words. <laughs> Fine. The bullet points then. Go south from here. Go underneath the wound with Dr. Enlin Tissot. Then go through the splinter lens and investigate Leyland Ruins. It is a long trip. Hey, Android. Commit that name to memory. Inland Tassat. That it, doctor. She, she doctor. Inland Tassat. Anlin. Inland Tassat. An Anlin. Anlin Tassat. There it is. Doctor. Anlin Tassat. Yeah, okay, that, that's fine. Okay, so find her, go through the caverns, make it to the other side, go through the splinter lens. You're going to need a guide to get through them, but you'll find. Trust me, you'll find him. And then uh, just beat the f- freaking Blackhold Collective to Leyland Ruins, figure out what the hell is going on, and come back. That is it. It's a long trip, which is why I'm offering so much money. Well, I guess I'll see you in a couple weeks then, bruv. Uh, he offers his hand. I grab it with my, the same hand he offers. <laughs> <laughs> I'd hold it. Uh, he, he looks at what you've done, and he removes your hand and then picks up your a right hand and clasp it in his and shakes. Ah, so that's what Pansy was trying to do. You boys have a wonderful trip. Remember, stick it to the BC. Beyond that, whatever methods possible in order to complete the, the quest. Hey, on a, on a scale of one to ten, one being the lowest, ten being the highest, well, how would you rate our interaction today? I would say... Three. Improvement. <laughs> All right. Well, on that note, we've got a long journey to go. I flip my bowler cap onto my head and use my cane to pull it down a little bit, and then I walk out. Give me a performance check. Performance! 16. It looks really cool. That was dope as hell. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, wait, wait. Before, before we leave this place, I must I, I got, I'll reach out. Hey, um, just curious. Can I maybe get some weapons and a shield? Oh, that might actually be a good thing to have. I imagine we're going to have to fight. Maybe the Black Hole Collective. I believe I have some things stored away, some old uh, weaponry. Um, And he goes into a back room and comes back out uh, with a wooden shield. Um, that looks decently used, but still, you know, fully combat ready. Um, and a mace. Sweet. Right? You wanted a mace? Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Okay. Good job. Yep. yep. You read my character um, sheet. Yay. <laughs> yeah, and a mace. Uh, he also goes over to a chest behind his desk uh, and starts rummaging through what sounds like cloth. And from there, he pulls out this set of armor that is it's got a lot of cloth integrated into it Archie you can kind of tell that it's not really a Torian in style um, with, the, with the way that the fabric is, is kind of made into it but he hands you this, this armor six um, and he says this is, um, this is one of my sets from my adventuring days I would say take care of it but I hope it takes more care of you and he offers it to you. I appreciate this kindness more than you know. I use all my feelings on you. Thank you. Love. Oh. His eyes turn into little hearts. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Yes, they do. They're blue hearts, but you can't see them, but they are behind the mask. You can't see them. Is that too many feelings? You know what? All feelings are valid. And if this is what you want to feel, then I am fine with that. Thank you for your help. Hello, dear listener. This is Tanner, and I just want to thank you for listening to the second episode of Another Realm. If you're enjoying the journey so far, episode 3 is available right now. You can also get some behind-the-scenes content in episode 3.5. If you want to find out more about the world of Yaset and the continent of Lear, 
You can find a bunch of nerdy world-building info at netherrealm.com. Thanks again, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the episode. All right, so you have you have this armor being warforged. You do need to integrate it into yourself, but we can say you kind of do that while you're moving on the trip, as long as there's nothing coming at you. You hear little welding signs from behind you, Archie, as I'm following. Um, so you guys head south out of town. Being as it's early daylight, everything's pretty visible, and now you're getting a few looks. Uh, whereas people were were nice and waving back to you last night, there you get a few raised eyebrows while heading out of the town. I'm waving at them. <laughs> yeah, a, f- a few wave back. Uh, nice. Not as many as last night, about half as much. Um, but you still get uh, <laughs> some nice waves. You guys head south towards the edge of town. And here you can see a little guard tower set up on the southern road. There's a, there is a guard outside. You can hear him talking to someone who is inside the guard tower. And some, some light complaining. Well, I have like a passive perception of 17 so can i just hear what they're saying yeah as you guys are passing by um you can hear the guy inside complaining about uh being clocked upside the head um yesterday uh just talking about you know a couple of guys that came in with a cart full of stuff um and he went to go do a search and they just knocked him the heck out archie this could be a clue is it like an open guard check or is it a like how does it look like yeah, it's open. Uh, open windows. Um, there's a door on it, but maybe I can sneak up. I just, you just stay right here. I'll take care of this. Don't worry, bruv. Give me a couple minutes and I'll be right back. All right, I walk over to the guard shack and I, um, mm-hmm. yeah, I wrap on the door with my cane. Hey, bruvs. I hate to interrupt. My name's Tim and I'm sniffing around to see what was going on in town. To try to help a couple people out so we can make sure that these crazy monsters that attacked us don't come back. I heard you were attacked yesterday, and that seems to be a bit coincidental. The one that's standing closer to the door, um, you know, you get a look at him first uh, as a taller gentleman wearing a helmet. I mean, full guard gear. The, uh, the guy inside is much smaller. He is a young halfling. He's sitting in there on a bench. The guy that's outside says, yeah, yeah, some guys came in and just, oh man, Sardo got clocked. And the halfling who you assume to be Sardo is sitting there on the stool, just shaking his head. He's, ah, I just was trying to do my job and, and I have such a headache. And he puts his heads in his hands. Oh, that's all right, but we understand. I understand you're trying to just do your job. Some people are just terrible, terrible people. Take advantage of good people like you. I was just wondering, do you happen to remember anything about the gentleman who assaulted you in such a tragic way? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, one was, was this wiry, tall, bald guy, and uh, the other one was this... In comparison, he was short. I mean, he was taller than me, but he was shorter than the other guy. Um, and he had uh, dark, curly hair. But they they came in on this cart uh, with this, you know, drawn by a single horse. And in, the, the back was all covered in this canvas. And I, 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 it's my job to inspect. It's, it's my job to inspect, Tim. Uh, I just, it's my job. And they, they whacked me. And I was the only one on duty. No, I understand, mate. It was your job, and you were doing a fine job at it. And these terrible men took advantage of you. And I would like to extend my condolences. And it's awful that that happened to you. Uh, one more question, if you don't mind. Do you remember if any of them had any uh, markings or symbols, anything they were wearing that was clear or defining? The, the taller guy, his right hand... His fingers were a little bent oddly, like they'd been smashed or broken at some point. Well, that's, that's good to know. Good to know. I'll keep that in mind. 
as I continue my search. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take three either out of a coin pouch and I'm gonna put it on the table and slide it over to hit, to the halfling and uh, I'm gonna say, "Go get you a good drink on me, bruv, and have yourself a good night of rest once you get off." And don't worry. I, 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 I can't. I can't. I mean, that's. I, that, they, they could. I could seem like a bribe. I can't. I can't take that. Well, sure you can. I'm telling you to get a drink because you got a headache. It's got nothing to do with the information you told me. Go and roll persuasion. You want to do persuasion or deception? <laughs> uh, persuasion. I, okay. 16? Unless you're better at deception and you think this is part of a lie. Oh, it is. It's all, this is all a lie. I've lied yeah, from okay. the minute I opened my mouth. But either I way, know, it's... It, I know it, you it, did, Tim. Huh? Go ahead. Do, yeah, 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 exactly. Fine. Yeah, all right. Deception's fine. Uh, well, it's 18 with deception, 16 with perception. Or perception oh, okay. So all right. Either way. Uh, he nods, and uh, you can see the other guard that's with him is is beaming and and eyeing it, uh, knowing that he's going to drink well tonight with his friend. Um, and uh, yeah, he he takes the bag. Thank you, I really do appreciate it. And what was your name again, bro? I'm sorry, I'm terrible with names. It's uh, it's Sardo. My name is Sardo. Pleasure to meet you, Sardo. And don't worry, all you need to know is Detective Tim is on the case, and we are taking this very seriously. You guys can see in the ground as you're heading south marks from the cart that the guys likely came in on. Uh, and you can actually see another another uh, set of them, uh, which they probably left on. Gotcha. Okay. Are they, can I, are they followable or is it just like a, some yeah. ruts? Okay. Yeah. I'm yeah. gonna, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna do me a follow. Yeah, you follow them, and they stay along the southern road that you would know uh, heads the way that you're needing to go towards Woundhold Keep. So you, you know generally that it's probably about two days' travel from here to Woundhold Keep. Um, you will need to make camp for the night, but your first day seems to be pretty easy traveling. You're able to follow the tracks pretty much to the edge of the Broadleaf Forest, um, which is the forest that lies between here and Woundhold. The trees here are, aren't very thick. It's not like a dense forest. Um, so it's relatively, you know, easy traversing it. And still, even in here, you can see the, the cart trails. Every, every about 10 seconds, uh, Archie, because I'm following, I'm following Archie the whole time. Uh, every, ten, every few, few minutes, how about that? Every few minutes, inquiry you hear from behind you. And it's followed by a question always. But uh, for example, inquiry. Where are you from, Archie? I'm from a port town, Port Wayworth, over on the east coast of our continent here. Ah, very nice. I'd ask where you were from, but for all we know, it was Sack. I have no clue. That's why I must find Brother Gansel. Brother Gansel is the key to unlocking my memories? I don't know if I actually have memories, to be honest. Nobody really knows. I do have memory of you rescuing me. Thank you. Yeah, easiest job I ever did. Is that because we're friends? You are inundated with questions um, from this thing. As you are kind of traversing, the sun is going down. You've had a full day of travel, and you're basically in the middle of Broadleaf Forest. You know it would take some time to get out of it, but again, it's not a very dangerous wood. You find pretty soon after the sun sets uh, a, a good place to set up camp. Looks like there might have been... You know, someone else who's set up here recently, there's a campfire and a clearing nearby. I'm assuming you mean there's a campfire ring, not an actual burning campfire. Yeah, campfire ring. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's, okay. No, it's just going, uh, which is not suspicious at all. You don't worry about it, uh, and it's fine. Listen here. Wispy says only we can stop forest fires. Okay, so this world's, this world's thing is, is Wispy. Wispy the Wisp? Wispy the Wombat. Oh, it's a yes. wombat. Yes. All right. Yes. Let's make up our own animal, Wispy the Woogalo. And what is a Woogalo? A wombat. It's a wombat. <laughs> it's a wombat. Okay. All right. <laughs> Great. Love it. <laughs> uh, let me go ahead and make a note of that. <laughs> you guys set up camp here in the middle of the forest. It's, it's nice. It's quiet. It's pleasant. Other than the constant questions uh, from Six. Inquiry. What's your favorite food? I'm not picky, mate. How about before you go to sleep, we finish the day off with a game of chess. Flip the board open. Oh, I love 
Okay, so we just roll to see who wins. Is that <laughs> sure, how we're doing sure. This? Yeah, um, just a straight D twenty. You, you can add no. You can add your intelligence modifier. Oh, great! So <laughs> actually, both neither one of us would have it be intelligence intelli or wisdom. Real talk, because like you learn chess, it's not. That's true. It should right. be wisdom because I'm actually. It would well, actually give me an advantage, which it should be. Well, uh, I I would I would say that when you when you read something, right? When you read things and learn things, it is intelligence. When you experience things, it it generates just as an wisdom. experience. That's yeah. Uh, that's kind of what I was saying. I was thinking like in like an argument, it'd be like your experience of previous games would have taught you how to play. Bro, better. there are some. Okay. All there right. There are so, some people that aren't smart that are great at chess. I've met them. So I don't care that way. I just was making a. I was just making a, a, a point. I am. Like I I can concede to that. If you're both willing to agree to it, then uh, you yes, can roll intelligence wisdom. or wisdom. All right, cool. Eighteen plus three, twenty-one. You win. <laughs> yes. I like scoot. Like I don't know. I, I make some woo-woo hand movements, and I like try to scoop his queen off the board. So as you're explaining another thing that he's asked during this chess match. Um, you, you try and, and make a little sneaky maneuver. Go ahead and roll sleight of hand. And Will, you can roll uh, perception against it. 21. 16 plus 5. Oh, he definitely catches me. It's like a saga, because I, I did not get that. I did not get 16 plus 5. I don't say anything. I, I definitely see it, but I play along with whatever ruse he's doing and still win the game. <laughs> All right, bro. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lay down now because I need sleep, and it's been a long day. So, uh, you've got watch, right? Oh, for sure. I don't need to sleep. So, six, you're you're here uh, next to this dying campfire, um, and through the canopy of trees above, you can see the stars in the sky, um, and kind of as they they shift through the night as you keep your watch. Are you are you actively watching? Like, how does your rest work? Centuries rest to benefit from a long rest. I need to enter an active state for six hours. So during which I'm not rendered unconscious and can see and hear as normal. So I'm just an, in an inactive state and basically like a little sentry tower. So I'm doing that for six hours or at least trying to. But I can hear and see normally. I'll face towards the road. OK, give me a perception check. I got, I'm good at perception. Nice. That is a 17 plus 5, 22. Wow, okay. As you're looking towards the road, you quickly realize your mistake in the direction you're paying attention to as you hear a twig snap behind you. Not just a normal rustling of the forest, but some things, footsteps that are approaching. Okay, I stand to attention. I just jump out of my inactive state. Okay, yeah, so you stand to attention, and the footsteps off in the distance stop. As I stand to attention, my eyes glow red, mm -hmm. and uh, behind the mask, I guess, you can see the glow red. I go, who goes there? Okay, Archie, you definitely hear this. Hi, what the fuck's going on? <laughs> okay, um, so now both of you are aware of something off in the woods uh and then uh, someone does emerge from the darkness um do you have dark vision six I, I do not have dark vision so you finally notice uh once the this uh being comes out into the uh light emitted from the embers of the fire um that it is a cloaked humanoid and next to it is a very large mastiff jowls hanging and drool dripping from either side but very intently looking at you the person in the cloak crosses their arms and uh, looks over at the two of you you can't see his face uh, because of the cloak but they'll call out to you we have people in our forest don't we boy and the dog next to him Burf. oh puppy <laughs> <laughs> what brings you to my woods I guess the eyes of the six start to go back to the bluish color that everybody's used to. Mm. We're going to wound hold. We're going to go underneath it and then find, uh, we're going to the Leyland ruins to complete a mission. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't realize we needed a pass to walk through a forest. Oh, no, not passes to walk through the forest. Just Eider. Uh, and he snaps, and you can hear 
two other footsteps approaching you from either side. Uh, so basically in a triangle formation around you. So the emotion kind of drains out of Archie's face. He just kind of goes blank. He just kind of looks at the guy and he looks at the dog and he goes, Mind if I pet your dog? I do mind if you pet my dog. He's not very nice to strangers. Oh, I see. Well, that's unfortunate. Th- re- thank you for asking. Very, I mean, that's... He's that's, very pretty. Yeah, I'll, I, I would say he's a purebred, but he's not. He's a pure mutt. Oh, that's unfortunate. Oh, no, they're, they're often healthier than, uh, than purebred dogs. Nothing weird bred into them like these little short snouts. I mean, just look at those haunches and that, uh, those eyes. I mean, they're a little droopy, but uh, he's attentive. Oh, it's, it's probably the breed that causes the droopy eyes, eh? I would suppose something along the line got in there. Uh, but but w- what we really need to be discussing is the amount that you're going to pay me to hey, sleep in my you, forest. Do you, do you know the difference between dogs and wolves, mate? Yes, extensively. What would you say it is? <laughs> I love this. I love this. <laughs> well... You see, most of it has been the domestication of uh, of wolves, since dogs are a direct line from them. Um, that's actually not true. With us. No, like, out of game, that's actually not true. Wild dogs were bred from wild dogs. Wolves, they figured that out recently. It's a recent really? distinction that they're actually... Yeah, this is completely... doesn't need to be all cut out, but I want to tell you this because it's cool. They found out that uh, most domesticated dogs are actually domesticated from wild prairie dogs now instead of wolves. Anyway, moving on. We can cut that out. He says all of that. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So you see, that's that's the difference between wolves and dogs. Unless you were talking like metaphorically in a way to try and you know not pay me the money. Oh, I just was wondering if you understood the difference. See, dogs they have this really interesting habit. When they bite, they tend to use the molars. Don't really sink the canines in. It's honestly because dogs aren't that serious. They don't really want to hurt you. They just want you to leave them alone. Maybe they're scared. Maybe they don't want you to touch their food. Who knows? But wolves, mate, well, wolves start serious. They start with the canines. You know the difference between me and you, mate? You're all dogs. I'm a fucking wolf. Roll initiative. Uh, 11. The acetator's dice are bad. Yeah, they, they really aren't. I have an 18. My first combat is six. I'm so excited. First up in combat is Archibald. As he pulls out his axe, uh, what do you do? Uh, how far is the leader dude bro with the dog? He he kept, um, everyone that seems to be in formation around you is kept about 35 feet away from you. All right, I'm going to rage. I'm going to transfer my great axe to my left hand and draw a javelin out of the pack and fling it at dude bro McBroseph with the dog. Okay, nice. Go ahead and roll. Uh, that's a 19 on the dice. That'll hit. Uh, do eight damage. Uh, so you pull this javelin uh, out of your pack and just launch it towards uh, this guy in the cloak. Um, it tears against his cloak and uh, rips flesh in his arm and then the it sticks into the ground behind him. But that definitely does connect. I wait. Okay. Next up is the Mastiff. You can see the guy in the cloak whistles, and the thing comes rushing towards you. It will clear the distance with its movement, then attempt to bite with its molars. It will chomp right near your leg. You're quick enough to move it back uh, so it doesn't connect with you. Um, But this Mastiff is now right in front of you. And that'll be the end of its turn. We are now at six. Well, I guess we're fighting. I'm uh, rolling to attack, and I rolled a eight. Who are, who are you attacking? You've got the, uh, the three humanoids, uh, three bandits, and then the, the Mastiff. Um, I'm going to attack the Mastiff. Going to punch Since a puppy. right there at Archie. I'm going to yep. punch oh, the you shit. Oh, you think what he's doing to it's bad? Wait till it's my turn again. Oh yeah. no! <laughs> punching, a punching puppy. I rolled an eight, though, no, so probably didn't uh, hit the puppy. Uh, no, that does not hit the puppy. You swing your mace uh, as this dog comes up. Um, it is able to move out of the way quick enough to where you don't connect with it. 
which means it is now uh, the guy you've been talking to. He pulls out a light crossbow and will aim at Archie, uh, attempting to make a hit there. So he fires this bolt at you, um, and it uh, sticks into your shoulder um, and connects. He's going to roll a little bit of damage. You're going to take six damage. Okay. On this crossbow bolt, which will bring us to the other two bandits. They will close in, and you hear both of them shing shing unsheath these scimitars that you can see flicker with the light from the embers. They will come within ten feet of you guys. You know they'll they'll take their whole dash action because they were thirty five feet away, and that will end their turn. And we're back up to you, Archie. Yeah, fuck okay. it. I'm just gonna black one of the bandits if I can. Does a seventeen hit? Yes, 17 hits. Um, so we'll just say the, there's one closer to you and then one closer to six. Which one are you going for? One closer to me. Seven damage. You cut this guy uh, across. Um, as you slash across his chest, uh, it loses his cloak, um, and you can see his face in the embers, and he is terrified as he looks down at the gash on his chest. He gets bloodied. I say to him, I've seen your face, mate. That means I've got your number with a grin. Now it's the Mastiff's turn. Uh, the Mastiff will attempt to bite you again, Archie. Rude. As its teeth connect, you take four damage, and I need you to make a strength saving throw. DC 11. 12. Nice. Nice. Um, it attempts to lock its jaws around you and then pin you forward and knock you to the ground, um, but you're able to keep uh, standing. Um, as it tries to make this. Six. What do you do? Man, this looks like it means a lot to you guys. I can't let you win, though. And then he says, Archie, that looked like it hurt. Uh, And he rolls a three plus six to heal you for nine hit points using healing word as a bonus action. Nice. Okay, so he heals Archie, and then uh, I guess he's just going to attack the dog. I'm going to hit the dog. Okay. Roll to hit. Oh. That is a 9 plus uh, 4. 13. That will hit. You bring your mace down and connect with the dog. Surprised, actually. Okay, cool. I actually hit. That is a 2 plus 2. 4. Okay. Um, Bad dog. You hit this thing, uh, and it it is... Oh, no, come on. You clock it right in the side uh, of the neck, um, and you can see it is dazed as it kind of stands there, and now it looks terrified as it looks back towards its master uh, and then back up at, at the the combat front. Oh, him. really, Tanner? You fucker. You fucking asshole. Did you kill him? <laughs> no, it's still standing. Uh, uh, okay, <laughs> wait a minute. We feel terrible <laughs> for... Fucking okay. Alright. You hit a dog with a mace, man. Like what, what do you want me to say? Alright. <laughs> now we move on to the uh the dog's owner. And uh you can see he actually is clearly worried. Um and he will drop the crossbow instead of reloading it. Uh, he'll take the dash action and uh, attempt to maneuver himself between you and the dog, so he uh shoves his dog backwards away from combat with you and takes its place. And that will end its turn. So now the uh, the bandit leader is standing in front of you instead of the Mastiff. The other two bandits both will make attacks, one on each of you. So, Archie, the scimitar flies uh, behind you and you bring up your great axe to parry it away. The one that is attempting to hit six will hit. Um, so it connects. This, uh, this scimitar clangs against your metal but somehow finds purchase. Um, between your bits of armor uh, into something that it can damage. You will take five damage. Uh, we're back up to the top of the order for Archie. Oh, okay. So Mr. Big Man has uh, entered my range. Correct. I'm going to turn him and I'm going to say, last chance, bruv, for you to fuck off and leave us be. It still seems like we've got you uh, outnumbered. So no, fuck you. 
All right. Well, does a 14 hit him? It does. Okay. Don't thank God. I was about to say it would would be way less badass if if he just misses. Eight damage as I whack him. So that means we're back at the Mastiff. The the owner will snap behind him, and uh, the the Mastiff will retreat uh, about 15 feet and uh, stand at the ready, but definitely looks uh, weak over on the side. Then we're at six. Okay, so six uh, just says, "Are you are you really sure? I Archie gave you a really good offer. Maybe you should take it. Are you do you want to try and persuade?" Yeah, that's what I'm doing. All right, free action. Go ahead and roll persuasion. That is an a- 19. Is that minus one? 19 minus one. Okay. All 18. right. You can see uh, the the leader kind of loosens up a bit, looks at his other men, and looks down at himself. I mean, he has taken a more substantial damage than it seems like he'd planned on. Um, and then he looks back to his dog, uh, and he kind of lowers his weapons. Not fully, still ready to try and defend himself if need be. All right. Okay. Men, a moment. You seem to be a bit more formidable than I expected, um, which is not very lucrative to business since this, he looks down at himself, will cost a bit of money to patch up. He spits over to the side uh, a little bit of blood. So... Tell you what, free passage through the woods, and the guys next to him both look down at themselves and look over and like shrug a little bit. One of them is pretty badly damaged, though. Does that seem fair? I look at uh six and I wait to see if he has if he says anything. Fair enough to me. We just want to go to Woundhold, as we said before. I have no quarrel with you. I'm six. Nice to meet you. He, he squints and looks at you hard and then lowers his weapon and, and you know, uh, mimes to the others to do the same. Mm. I am Jefferson. I roll my axe back into its holder on my back and I say, and I'm the fucking king of Port Royal. Now get the fuck out my face and leave us be. I don't want to see you guys again. I do. I'm going to chop your bloody heads off and feed your fucking heads to your dogs. I apologize, your highness. And he gives you a a little mocking bow. Free passage. If anyone else ends up bothering you, um, just mention my name and you should be fine. Oh, and and one more thing uh, before you go. uh, Just remember, and his his eyes glow red under the mask again. I don't sleep. That's terrifying. Jefferson nods. The other guys, you know, the one guy that's uninjured is like, what the fuck, man? Uh, but the other guy seems ha- more than happy to walk away with his life. So the three men and the, the limpy dog uh, head back into the darkness. And you two have uh, just just gone through your first combat together. <laughs> bonding. <laughs> Yay. Wow. That was pretty easy. <laughs> Careful. Careful. He so says taunting the DM. <laughs> you're going to end up biting your tongue if you don't count your blessings when they come. That's that's fair. I honestly, that's my first combat in a long time. I I know that I've done this before. I truthfully can't remember. But you didn't do half bad, bro. The the two of you go back into your rest states, pretty much not worried about anything else coming out at you unless it's a wild beast. The only difference is I'm turned the other way. <laughs> Oh, you're walking, watching to the woods now? Okay. Yeah. So you guys go back to rest. And Six, you do have some semblance of like, it's not really a rim cycle, uh, but it is, you know, sort of processing in the back of your mind. And you're watching out into this dark forest. And then slowly as the embers go out, the darkness creeps in and it grows darker and darker and you look up at the sky and you can no longer see the stars and if you try and look for them you can no longer see Archie who was nearby and you should be able to see no matter what just from the moonlight and then you hear this chorus of voices 
reach out to you and resonate within you. And these voices say, Our sight reaches far, and we see that the Maker has awakened.